Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, six wines in front of me from a place where I don't know how many of you go and shop at Lidl, uh, but uh, this is their um, uh, part of their more upmarket wine selection, and um, let's just dig in and see where we get to with them. Um, no particular region. Uh, I've, I've got loads of four French ones, uh, an Italian and a Spaniard. First, uh, and only one white wine, which is uh, a Puy Fouissé. Um, I, uh, Cellier Saint-Jean is the name of producer, but I think the idea of these is that they are... It's, it doesn't have uh, the, the name Lidl on the labels, but um, uh, you, you probably won't find these too many other places. Or may you, I don't know. Anyway, let's try it. Well, there's a slight strange honeyed toasty sulphur character going on here. Uh, I miss a little bit of um, uh, fruit. Um, it smells okay rather than fine. Anyway, I'll better taste it. Not mad keen on that. Um, yeah, that honey edge makes me think that uh, there's, uh, there's a wine that didn't have enough fruit in the first place that has, uh, yeah, got, got some air in somewhere and uh, lost a little bit of something, uh, of freshness in the process. Let's try wine number two, which is a 2011 Fleury, again from the same people. Just going to give me a glass a little rinse with, uh, uh, with this one and uh, then proceed. Now earlier today I tasted a, a load of uh, Cru Beaujolais and um, some of them were good, some of them were very good. Some of them were... This, this feels more on the... Um, I, it, it's got some of that slightly sharp raspberry earthiness. Uh, but I, it feels like it's going to maybe need a little bit more flesh to uh, sustain that uh, structure. Maybe wrong, let's see. And it's decent enough. Um, certainly better than the Puy Fouy say. But um, Beaujolais for me should have this uh, juicy succulence about it. Um, and I think it just misses out on that. Hey. Um, Next one, uh, wine number three, uh, Puisquin saint emilion um, from uh, 2011, Par Leroy Chevalier, Leroy Knight, if you want to call him that. Anyway, Leroy Chevalier, 2011, Puisquin. This smells better. Uh, juicy, earthy, uh, red currant, black currant, um, and uh, yeah, it feels like it's going to have a bit of succulence about it and um, uh, freshness and perkiness and smells good. Touch of smoky bacon. Um, can't complain with it at that price. Maybe, okay, I am going to complain. Um, maybe I'm not sure whether that little bit of, um, that somewhat, so there is an oak impact there that I think could have been a little bit more sensitively handled. I get this slight smoky bacon that um, I'd almost have liked them to, uh, uh, instead of uh, trying to inject something that maybe maybe it's from you. Uh, this is what I find out that it's a completely unoaked wine. I'll just see if it says, a, no, it doesn't say anything on, on, on the back. But um, that's a wine that for me I think would have benefited from a little bit of softening in some large old barrels just to uh, get it to chill out a bit. It's okay. Um, also from Bordeaux, wine number four, it's uh, saint Emilion Grand Cru. Um, uh, L'Union de Producteurs de saint Emilion, Local co-op, in other words. Better vintage, better oak. That's what seems to come through here. Uh, it feels like there's a, a more juicy, rounded, um, supple, uh, black currenty, black brieish Merlot uh, mixed with a, a, I don't know whether it's a toasting of the barrels or whether it's barrels compared with non-barrels or chips. I don't know if they'd used chips on the previous one, but um, here, yeah, it feels like a much more grown-up style. Uh, not hugely grown-up in the Bordeaux firmament, but um, it smells okay. And it is okay. Um, there's a slight astringency about it, but it's more this black currants, blackberries, a bit of plums in there, and this toasty oak. Feels like a wine I want to pour out and uh, uh, give a couple of hours to uh, let it relax into its... Uh, uh, into its surroundings and um, then dig into with some rather rare roast beef. Um, I like that. Uh, wine number five, Chianti Reserva. Not Chianti Classico or Chianti Rafina or anything like that, just Chianti Reserva. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Prime example of great Tuscan wine. Doesn't say too much on the back label apart from having it with meats and cheese. Anyway, let's see what it's like. Well, 2009 was uh, quite a warm vintage in, uh, in in Tuscany, and some parts it was very warm. 
and there's a, a soft, almost raisiny character here. A uh, bit of cherries, uh, but uh, the, yeah, the soft, dusty, warm raisin character. It's almost like a, a Rioja Chianti, if that makes sense. Uh, not that it, it, I, what I mean by that, it's, it's that dusty warmth of Spain uh, mixed with uh, the uh, cherry sourness of Sangiovese. And not quite as good as I expected it to be. I, I, I find that, that there is a uh, slightly um, intrusive vanilla character. Um, and um, yeah, the fruit uh, that, that, that smelled, I, I was saying about smelling those raisins, maybe that was indicating that lack of freshness, which I, I, I then come to uh, when I taste it. It's okay. Um, but um, I think that... Um, well, certainly the, the Santa Million uh, stands head and shoulders above it. Let's see what the final one is like. Uh, Rioja, Saxa Loquunt. Oh, actually, this has got a, 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 a Carmelo Ortega. Uh, so it's got it's got the name of, of a producer on. Uh, so let's have a see what this one's like. Uh, vintage was 2010. And um, the, sometimes I smell Rioja and it's got this uh, character which you, you associate more with a white wine, uh, orange peel. Um, and I get the same in Syrah. Uh, here I get, I get, I get it, this, this touch of um, citrus with um, red berries quite in, in the background. Strange thing is that the more you leave it, the more red fruit comes through. But it feels to me this uh, orange peel acidity that's uh, driving it at the moment. It's good. It's, well, it, smells, it smells okay. Yeah, soft, mellow, juicy, rounded. There is a plushness and confidence about it, um, and um, it's um, in, in Rioja terms, it's more on the modern side. They, 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 I don't think it's had uh, uh, lots and lots of aging in oak. Uh, it doesn't say it doesn't say anything. The uh, Crown for Reserva and Grand Reserva doesn't use those uh, uh, categorizations, but there's a the juicy plumminess mixed with this orange peel, and um, yeah, I, 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 I like the freshness there. I like the um, uh, it's a mixture of richness and freshness. So favourites of these two, Santa Million Grand Cru and, and the Rioja. The others, work in progress. Hey, see you soon.